Fox 35 News. Welcome back to Fox 35 News at 830. They are forever your babies, but like it or not, your kids have to grow up at some point. But more than ever, kids are going through puberty, puberty that is, at an earlier age. So what's to blame here, and how can you keep your child's hormones in check? Joining us right now is Dr. Jennifer Landa, board-certified hormone expert and chief medical officer of Body Logic. Good morning. Good morning. I was just telling you, this is really a great topic. We're dealing with this at my house. I have a 10-year-old. She's in fifth grade. But I started noticing in second grade, kids were developing. By third grade, three of them were already going through menstruation. And it's so much earlier than we remember as kids. Yes, Heidi, I'm seeing the same thing because I have an eight-year-old daughter and I'm seeing the same thing in her classes. What's happening now is earlier puberty used to be common at about age 15 or 16 and over the last several decades it's been getting earlier and earlier and now we're seeing girls going through puberty, signs of puberty like breast development and pubic hair starting at ages six to eight. Pre precocious puberty is really what we're talking about here and precocious puberty was defined as early puberty and used to be defined as earlier than eight years old in girls and now we're starting to move that definition back to earlier than seven because it's becoming more and more common I worry about foods maybe hormones in the meat and the milk or some of the plastics we use or chemicals can any of these be linked back to it or do we not know why it's happening Scientists have linked precocious puberty to many different causes, but some of the ones that you just mentioned are the ones. So number one, hormones in food. The FDA approves six different hormones in food, mm -hmm. including estradiol, progesterone, and testosterone, and those are the sex hormones that can increase puberty. Obesity is another thing because estrogens are made in fat tissues and stored in fat tissues, so more obesity, more fat, more estrogen. And also the parabens, like you said, the household products Parabens, a lot of your viewers might mm -hmm. not know, but they'll start hearing more about. Parabens contain pro are, are xenoestrogens, so they act like estrogen in the body, and that can increase our risk of early puberty. When we talk about early puberty, I think one of the hardest parts is you have to start talking to your kids about subjects you're just not ready for, and maybe they're not mentally for. So is there anything that we can do maybe to turn back the hands of time a little bit and help our kids so that maybe they're not there quite as soon? Yes, there are three things that you can really do right now to try to decrease the incidence of this. Number one is go green with your kid's diet. Okay. Try to eat healthier foods. Make sure, read labels and make sure you're eating foods that haven't been injected with hormones and pesticides. Number two, read the household product labels. Look for the parabens. Things like methylparaben and propylparaben mm -hmm. are things that you really want to avoid in shampoos, body lotions, and they're there. They're everywhere. Number three, exercise make sure your kids get exercise every day go out and take a walk as a family tonight some great information i think we could talk hours about this because a lot of moms and dads have concerns about it thank you so much for joining us hopefully we can start making a few of those steps So you're not, going to tell, uh, you're not going to hear from me tonight what to do if you have hot flashes, what to do for this. We're going to tell you how to prevent these things in the first place. Okay, so everybody's going to leave here with at least one thing that they're going to be able to do tonight to make a change in their life. Now, so the biggest problem here is that with the epidemic of estrogen, the epidemic of hormonal imbalances in the United States, nobody's asking why. Tonight we're going to go over why is this happening? 
And the most important thing for me, guys, is for you to be successful in your life. You know, I, I love that what they had out there on the marquee. What's the purpose of living? What's the purpose of living if you're not living it maximized? That's how I look at it. Because if you're not living maximized, what are you doing? Surviving. And I wasn't put on this planet to survive. I was put on this planet just like everybody else in this, in this room to thrive. So I want to make sure you guys know that. We're going to get a lot of information about this tonight. So, yeah, Matt. Can I ask a quick question? Are you nice. saying that other uh, global demographics aren't suffering from just hormonal issues? No, like no, no. Are American? When you talk about epidemics, most of them are here, and most of them we're doing to ourselves. Like this menopause with all these hot flashes, that's mostly in the United States, not across the world. Not across the world. So you got to really look at that. It's what we're doing to our bodies and how we're living our lives, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. What kind of things you make a change in your lifestyle that is creating this problem in the first place. Yeah. So check out this quote. It sounds very familiar to a lot of you. Today, more than 90 percent of all chronic diseases caused by limiting beliefs, neurological interference, nutritional deficiencies, poor oxygenation of your cells, and insufficient detoxification pathways. That's a lifestyle. These are all things that we're doing to ourselves. So if these are things that are causing just about any problem you can ever think of. How do we fix that? You guys know what I'm going to say, don't you? You guys seen these five circles before? <coughs> yes, these are the five essentials. And I was thinking about this today, when I, actually when I was coming up at this workshop, going, somebody could say, well, that's your answer for everything. And you know what? It is. It is the answer for everything. And guess what? It's never going to change. It's never going to change. It's, it shouldn't, shouldn't change. It shouldn't change, because these are all five things that are essential for our lives. So I want you guys to understand, again tonight, I came up, I had about 25 hours of research to come up with what I came up with here for you tonight. I got eight hours of research to give you guys here tonight, but I don't want to keep you all here till midnight. So there's a lot of things we can talk about when it comes to hormones, a ton. Okay, I'm not going to touch upon all of them. I try to whittle this down to about an hour, hour 15 of that fantastic information and stuff that you can be able to actually take home and change and use. So when you talk about hormones, you have to think of hormones as a symphony. You have all the different sections of your symphony. They have to be playing the right tune, the right music, the right volume, the right key. They gotta be doing everything right for it to sound like beautiful music. The same thing happens in your body when it comes to hormones. Your hormones are all connected. I had a conversation with a patient just today. If you have a thyroid problem, guess what else you have? You also have a cortisol problem. If you have a testosterone problem, guess what else you have? You have an estrogen problem. And then you probably also have a thyroid problem. Because they all work in symphony. Try not to figure out what this means. Okay, it's very, very confusing. My point of putting that up is to show you just a little bit about how complicated hormones can be, these tiny little chemicals in every single one of us. But the really neat thing is, if this is a symphony, who's in charge of the symphony to tell everybody what to do and when to do it? You are. Yes. So in a symphony, you have a conductor inside of you, you have a conductor, and that is your brain and nervous system. That is why your nervous system is so important. It plays such a big role in your health, especially when it comes to hormones. We need to make sure our nervous system is functioning. Now, here are some of the, the, the hormones we're going to talk about here tonight. We're going to be talking about estrogen, progesterone, uh, testosterone, thyroid, cortisol, uh, insulin, thyroid. I mean, the thyroid has a bunch of different ones, but we're really going to be focusing on a couple of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to break these down just a little bit. And estrogen, you know, Kara was estrogen, and her breasts have grown up overnight. Because estrogen, what is it? What is estrogen for? Estrogen is actually growth and peripherally uh, breast tissue and uterine lining. So if you have too much progesterone, what's going to happen to those tissues in your, in your breast? They're going to continue to make. And if you have too much estrogen, and you have too much proliferation of your cells, what's that called? Breast cancer, somebody said that. Yeah. So this is one of the epidemics we're seeing. Symptoms of estrogen dominance. Again, I talk about estrogen, which sex are we thinking about, male or female? Thinking about female, but there's going to be male as well. So these are just some symptoms of estrogen dominance. Irritability, anxiety, hot flashes, insomnia, weight gain, migraines, depression. I'm sure no women have any idea what that's like, right? None of you? Okay. Now men. Estrogen dominance in men. We can grow breasts. Decreased libido, infertility, erectile dysfunction, enlarged prostate. Too much estrogen actually lead to breast cancer in men. 
I've had a patient with a male patient with breast cancer, prostate cancer, andropause. That was one of the, the answers to our questions during our patient appreciation day a couple weeks ago was, is the, do males go through the male equivalent of menopause? And the answer is yes. Because our testosterone levels drop and then your husband gets old. Here. And that's what I was saying. Yes, I have kids here. Okay. Then we have progesterone. Progesterone is there to really balance out your estrogen. Look at all of those things that too little progesterone causes. Headaches and hot flashes, low libidos, night sweats, fuzzy thinking, moodiness, irritable, irritability, food cravings, and then too much progesterone, which you don't see very much of, can cause depression and difficulty sleeping. So we need these two to be in balance. Now testosterone. Too much testosterone. If you look at too much testosterone, it will look a lot like puberty in men. You have oily skin, acne, facial hair, deepening in the voice, anger, aggression, male pattern, baldness, PCOS. That's not in men. That's in, that's in women. Polycystic ovarian syndrome. We don't have those. So, women, do you have testosterone in your body? Absolutely. Just as much as we have estrogen in ours. Now, too little testosterone, your urinary incontinence, dry skin, brittle hair, decreased sexual desire, reduced energy, depression. So you can see that these have a big, huge effect if they're not in balance. So we need just the right amount of each of these. So if you go to your medical doctor and you're out of balance, what are they going to do? They're going to give you drugs. They're going to try to balance it for you instead of trying to figure out why you're out of balance. That's called hormone replacement therapy. Is anybody familiar with that? Raise your hand if you're familiar with that. Okay. So years ago, that was what everybody did, hormone replacement therapy. But according to John Abramson, medical doctor at Harvard, said HRD, hormone replacement therapy, doesn't decrease the risk of heart disease, stroke, or Alzheimer's. It actually increases the risk. That's pretty profound. A women's risk of breast cancer increased 8% each year while you're on HRT. Why? Because it doesn't ever address the cause of the problem. You're just masking it, masking it, masking it. And when you go on HRT, Premarin is the one that they use. So Premarin, after years of study, steady increase, look at this. Rates dropped 7% of breast cancer in 2003. That's one year after millions of women stopped taking it. So you stop taking HRT, breast cancer reduces. Does anybody know why I have a horse on there? Okay, so for those of you that don't know why I have a horse on here, Premarin is actually harvested from a pregnant horse's Urine. Pregnant mare, urine. Pregnant mare, urine. Anybody else a little nauseous now? Yeah. I said that night, my staff were like, oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, pregnant mare, So what we need to do is really get to the root cause of the problem. The causes of these hormonal imbalances are three things. These are the three biggest ones that I wanted to focus on. One is your standard American diet. Number two is xenoestrogens, and you're going to learn a lot about that here tonight. I know I've talked a lot about that over the past few weeks. And then neurological stress. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to talk about that standard American diet. Now, I have a video that's very, very important for you guys to pay close attention to, because these guys have knocked it out of the park and really helped you understand what you need to do in order to be healthy. It's dinner time on the East Coast in less than an hour. People are going to die. Sir, we've got a boy on the hotline who says he might know something. Who is this? My name isn't important. What matters is that the answer is in the pyramid. The pyramid? That's ancient stuff you're talking about. Are you sure? Bring up the pyramid. What, what is it? What is it for? We built the pyramid a long time ago to illustrate how much people should eat of the four basic food groups. Sir, we abandoned the pyramid when Michelle Obama got involved. The pyramid doesn't work. We've already tried it. It's upside down. What? Sir, the pyramid is upside down. Turn the pyramid upside down. You can't be serious. That would put butter and fat at the top Flip of the... Flip the damn food pyramid! This is not FDA approved! It's dinner time on the East Coast in 10 minutes. Now do it! Sir, we've got a match. Nutrition is stabilizing! We've got a well-balanced vaccine, sir! Get the president on the phone. Tell him to have some steak with his butter. How hilarious is that? I found that, I'm like, I don't even have to, I don't, I don't have to really say anything more about that. Those two guys in South Park, Littleton, Colorado, got it. 
yet most Americans still don't understand this or why we even talk about that. So and I know when I first did this slide, my stats, like, I you screwed up. Your pyramid's upside down. But no, we did that on purpose. Because it is upside down. Because if you eat the standard American diet, they're telling you you need to eat six to 11 servings of grain every single day. Six to 11 grain of servings of grain. And what does grain convert to into your body? Sugar. What, what, is, what feeds cancer? Sugar. Yeah. What does sugar eventually turn into? Fat. Turns into fat. And the more fat cells you have, the more estrogen you have. And most people don't realize that when you have this big belly and it's full of fat, it is actually secreting <coughs> hormones. It's like a big gland sitting up there. So in women, it just produces estrogen. In men, it takes testosterone and converts it to estrogen and then secretes estrogen. Do you see why estrogen dominance can be a problem? We're all at risk here, especially when we're eating too much grains. Now, men, we want our testosterone levels to be up, right? So we can be manly, so we can feel good, libido's good, all that fun stuff. But what happens when you eat sugar? This was presented at the Endocrine Society's 91st Annual Meeting in Washington, D.C. They found that sugar consumption can drop a man's testosterone by 25%. So I see a lot more women here than I see men. And I see a lot of women here who I know have husbands that are at home. So you want him to have his testosterone up? Tell him no more sugar. That easy. Get off the sugar, testosterone comes up. So what do we need to do? How do we need to eat? We need to eat the core plan at a minimum. So for those of you that are patients, you know we have the core plan, we have the advanced plan. The advanced plan cuts out all sugar. Well, the core plan is gonna be your minimum standard. This is something that every single one of you, let alone every single one of us, should be eating like. Through your minimum standard, something you do not fall below. So, do we need to eat fat? Yes, we need to eat more fat. All right, fat should be at the top of that chain. So we need to eat more good fats, less bad fats. Protein. Your protein is very important that it's clean because if it's dirty, it has pesticides and herbicides that we're going to be talking about, those can cause toxicity. So naturally raised versus those that are commercially raised. And then you have your carbohydrates. So at a minimum, your carbs need to be whole grain. They do not need to be the white bleached bread, the white bleached rice, that stuff like that. So let's talk about fat first. So the fats, we have good fats, we have I don't want to call them bad fats, but it's not so good fats because we still need them. They're essential. We have the omega 3s, we have the omega 6s. The reason why omega 3s are called good fats is because they're anti inflammatory. So they actually fight inflammation. And inflammation is the root cause of all disease. So when you guys were here back in March, we talked about heart disease. Cholesterol is not the problem, inflammation was the problem. Cholesterol was just trying to help out. So we need more omega 3s, more balance. But the thing is, I could call omega 6s bad because they are pro-inflammatory. They actually cause inflammation when there's too much of it. But it's really about the balance. Omega 3s and omega 6s need to be in the right balance. The correct balance is a 2 to 1 ratio. 2 6s to every 1 3. The problem is, in our standard American diet, we are eating between 20 to 1 and a 25 to 1 ratio in favor of omega 6s. And we have too many omega-6s, now we're leading to inflammation. Inflammation is going to lead to cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's. So stuff that nobody, none of us want to deal with or have to deal with. So what do we need to do? Eat more what? Omega what? Threes. Very simple, right? So where are we going to get our omega-3s from? I thought this was great. Good fat versus bad fat. Nature doesn't make bad fats. Factories do. I couldn't pass that up and put that in there. I thought that was awesome. The only thing on here I don't like is the fact that they say lard is good. It's natural. It comes from pigs, but I'm not going to tell you to eat that. Yeah, so let's, let's cut that one out. Butter, tallow, which is lard from your grass-fed beef. you got your coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil. These are all very high in omega-3s. These are all very, very good for you. Then you have your bad fat, which are your canola oils, the soybean, the sunflower, the corn, the safflower, grapeseed, and any margarine, any kind of margarine at all. So why are these ones bad? One, they're chemically processed. Two, they're genetically modified. And three, they're high in omega-6s. These are three things you do not want in your diet. And so, yes, Brenda? And we're supposed to eat lard? No, I told you, don't, don't eat the lard. Lard's from pigs, and pigs are dirty. 
It's up there. I just couldn't. I had a. I, I thought the thing was too cool. But don't eat the mark. Ignore that. That. That brought. Sorry, you're coming. What about um, peanut oil and vegetables? No, vegetable oil completely poisonous. Right. What about? Peanut? I wouldn't touch it either. Again, high omega sixes. But the thing with peanuts, it's like, oh, okay, peanuts. Are they good for you or not? No. They're not. Okay. Because you have it's a catch twenty two. You need to eat organic peanuts because the other ones, the conventional ones, are highly sprayed for something called aflatoxin. But now you eat organic peanuts, now what are you getting? The aflatoxin. So it's just, so you just don't, just don't, it's not even a nut, it's a legume, so you really shouldn't just stay away from peanuts. Now, you can you have peanut butter once a year? I'm not going to kill you. But you can be making your kids peanut butter and get sandwiches every day? Absolutely not. So it's easy fix, go to almond butter. Yeah? Yeah? Thumbs up on that one, buddy. that was. I like it. All right, so the healing diet, more and more fats. You should be eating more fat than you ever thought you should. Again, everybody thinks that fats are bad. We've been taught that brainwashed for years. Fat, bad, fat, bad. But yet, more of us are fat and overweight than we've ever been, even though there's less fat in our diet. So eat more fat. Just make sure you're eating good quality fats and then getting rid of the bad quality fats. So you get your fresh caught salmon, um, you get your nuts, your avocados your butters and your cheeses. Now, we're gonna talk about that here in a second. And then you got your, so while commercial meats have been linked to cancer and heart disease, so if you go to your doctor and he's in, you ask him, should I eat red meat, what are they gonna tell you? They're saying no, because it's been linked to heart disease and cancer. But they're also not understanding that there's a difference between conventional red meat and grass-fed red meat. Huge difference. So this is what grain-fed cows look like. They're in troughs. And what are they eating? Grains and corn. What are those grains? Are they genetically modified or are they organic? Genetically modified. And they're, what else are they spray? Pesticides, herbicides. Do you know what else they feed these guys? They feed them whatever they can to get them fat. Candy, I saw a documentary where they're feeding these, these guys candy with their upper mouth. Candy, it's disgusting. Now, doesn't that look much heavier cow? <laughs> Isn't that what cows are supposed to look like? Yeah, I, I like the cows we see around here, by the, you know, right at the, at the corner here, at Arbor Hill and Trinity Church. I wake them every day and go home. I'm like, hey, cows. They're hanging out in the yard. It's cool. That's what they're supposed to be, not locked up eating a trough or whatever. So I thought this was a really good infographic. I know it's kind of difficult for you to see. I'm going to try to read some of it for you. The difference between grass fed and grain fed. So grass fed are going to eat 100% grass from the day they're weaned until the day they're slaughtered where your grain fed is eating what they say, um, anything, 90% corn, 10% other, you can see candy wrappers up there. Um, there's, what else was on there, some other stuff. High energy foods, like potato waste, bakery waste, um, is it litter, chicken litter, meat processing waste. Yeah, guys, remember this one. I know a lot of you have heard me say this before, but you're not what you eat, you are what your food ate. So you better make sure that that cow that you're gonna eat is eating a clean diet too. Okay. So the other difference is so no antibiotics in the green on the grass fed. Of course, there's 29 million pounds used on livestock in 2009 in your conventional. No hormones in the grass fed. Tons of hormones, 10 to 15 percent uh, to increase the, the growth rate by 10 to 15 percent using the growth hormone. And who's getting that in our diet? We are. Remember the kids having I mean, their first cycle at age six. That's why, guys. That, that disgusts me. So in grass-fed, they're supposed to mature in one and a half to two years, but with all the chemicals they're implanting and, and injecting in these cows, they're doing it in a year, maturing it in a year. You, and that's the reason right there, guys, why they do it. That's twice the profit. Every year? Yeah. So what happens with what's going on inside? Two to four times more omega-3. So when you're eating grass-fed beef, those ratios of omega-3s to omega-6s, we need them in balance. You're in balance. It's four to one ratio of sixes to threes when you're eating grass-fed versus 20 to one or 25 to one when you're looking at the convention. So when you eat the non-grass-fed beef, too much of omega-6s, absolutely it's gonna cause disease. I know I have. Um, the organic chicken, fine. The organic beef is just organic beef. Now that's a great question because I have a family member who was having these stomach issues, and I was asking her about her diet, and she goes, well, I get my ground beef from Costco. I'm like, well, is it, it's not grass-fed. She goes, oh, no, it's grass-fed. 
And I was like, I know for a fact. I've talked to the butcher. They don't have grass-fed at Costco, and they have no intention of getting it anytime soon. She's like, no, no, I, I guarantee it's grass-fed. And I'm like, okay, well, when you get home, can shoot me a picture. It's what she didn't shoot me a picture of, because she was embarrassed because she didn't read the label very carefully, because there's grass on it. There's a picture of grass on it, and it says organic. Gotcha. That's marketing right there, guys. It was not grass-fed. So the organic chicken, yes, there is no grass-fed beef at Costco. <coughs> Bison? Bison is fine because it, it's, not, it's, it's not conventionally raised. It's all farm. It's all grass. Grass fed, yeah. I, I like bison. We made some bison hot dogs. How are those back there, guys? Oh, winners. They're good, right? Yeah, bison hot dogs were clean. So, if we need more omega 3s, less omega 6s, or we need a good balance so you can get them from your beef, from the wild caught fish, the nuts, and the fats, but most of us aren't eating enough of it. So, what do we need to do with our, with, with our diet? Somebody said supplement. We need a supplement with it. So what I want everybody to do is when, they're, when they leave here tonight, I want you guys to go back to Costco and I want you to buy this right here. The Costco brand fish oil. It's about, what is that, a thousand pills for six dollars? Yeah? Now you guys know I'm kidding, right? Yeah. But I want to show some of you that have never been here before the difference between what's really in there and the market. So if you read this, it looks great. It's 1,200 milligrams, 684 of omega-3 fatty acids. And Dr. Marshall's told you omega-3s are good, so we need to go get more of those in us. And we're going to be anti-inflammatory, we're going to live on them. Great. Well, when you turn it around and you get the truth, you get the truth of what's actually inside of the ingredients. So fish oil concentrate, gelatin, water, glycerin, tocopherol. Okay. But it also may, 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 may contain methacrylic acid, copolymer. Okay, nice. That's good. Um, Try out the citrate, polystory 80, propylene glycol. I shouldn't have to read any further than that one. Propylene glycol is one of the main ingredients in antifreeze. And now it's in your, your, your food that you're supposed to be taking to help you be healthy. Do you guys see why it's important to read the ingredients? Every single thing, not just your food. You guys see that? Yeah. This is why Maximize Living has even come up with supplements. We were tired of people going to the store and buying stuff like that, thinking that they're doing something good, they're actually doing something not so good. So that's why we have the optimal omega. It was actually reformulated back in September to add more omega-3s. But there is omega-6 in there. Why do we need omega-6 in there? It's about the balance. It's about the balance. And if you're getting omega-6s from borage oil, which is actually a great source of it, it's a lot better, your body's going to really use it better, than getting your omega-6s from, let's say, vegetable oil, which is full of omega-6s, but not the good kind. Okay? So, carb replacements. When we talk about changing out your carbs, people always freak out. Because I can't eat bread. What am I going to do? What am I going to do for breakfast? Has anybody here had any of our dinner rolls at one of our rescue nights? Carol, I know you made them for me. <laughs> they were so good, right? And they're made of psyllium husk, and put flaxseed, and, and what was it, boiling water? baby soda or something like that. I mean, there's like nothing in it. And it tastes and looks and just it feels like bread. It's awesome. There are so many substitutions. The thing is, I want to make sure that I'm not sitting here telling you don't do this, don't do this, but you have to have something to do instead. You have to have a substitute. Because if you don't have that substitute, you're going to leave here upset and frustrated and thinking that everything's wrong. You can't do anything right. Okay? So flaxseed bread, great cupcakes, great. Has anybody ever had our um, little uh, two bite brownies that my wife's made? They're made of black beans. You like them? They're really good, right? They're made of black beans. There's no grain in it at all. There's no carbs, per se, in them at all. It's healthy. It's a very healthy version of it. So there are ways around it. I can still make pancakes. I had pancakes this weekend. I made them for my kids. Almond flour, coconut flour, eggs, baking soda, vanilla. Dot, dot. Sometimes I do. That's usually my fault because I'm, I'm, I'm not a baker. I'm a cook. You know, I eat cookies. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I don't measure anything. It's probably my problem. All right. So we're going to switch gears here and we're going to talk about something called xenoestrogens. And I have a video for you guys to take. In my early 20s, I started to um, have a lot of abdominal pain and a lot of discomfort and it, we really weren't sure what was going on. So I um, went to see the doctors and they finally diagnosed me with um, an ovarian cyst. And um, I was having multiple cysts at different times, but at one point one of the cysts grew to the size of a large goose egg. So they decided it was prudent to go in there and remove the, uh, the cyst. 
Unfortunately, I continued to develop ovarian cysts and then I started to develop fibrocystic breast disease and lumps in my breast. And um, there were no answers at that point other than the doctor said, have some kids, that'll probably fix it for you. So I did, I had four kids, four boys, which are wonderful. And that's not the reason why I had them either, but that was, you know, it was just time. And, um, and unfortunately that again didn't fix the, the problems, the hormone problems I was uh, experiencing. One day my neighbor called me and said, um, read this article on parabens. She said they have a, what's called a xenoestrogen effect on breast tissue. And so I read the information that she shared with me and then I started to dig and I started to dig deeper and I found out that xenoestrogens are everywhere. They're in not just your beauty products, but they're in your household cleaners. Uh, they're in your kitchen, your bathroom, your, your laundry, they're everywhere. So if you thought we were having fun before, now we're going to have a lot of fun. Because xenoestrogens are everywhere. And I guess I wish it was fun, I really do, but this is, not, this is not fun stuff. This is kind of scary, but again, I want you to understand this stuff. And this is the stuff that I was talking to a lot of my patients over the past two weeks and said, do you know what a xenoestrogen is? What do you think they said? Oh, what? Yeah, no. Most people don't know what they are, and you need to know what these are so that you know how to avoid them. Because if you don't know what they are, you don't know what they do, you're going to become a victim to it. So xenoestrogens, like this woman was saying, these are toxins that act like estrogens. They are the same size and same shape as estrogen. So all of your cells in your body have these receptors and they are shaped a certain way just to accept estrogen. But xenoestrogens look just like estrogen. So what do they do? They go by a site and they fit right in. So now they fit in there, so what does that cell think it's got? Estrogen. So what does it start doing? Whatever estrogen tells it to do. So now it, 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 your body is mimicking that, as if there's estrogen there. Now, twofold problem there. One, now you're producing the estrogenic, estrogenic effects as if you already have estrogen. Second problem is, estrogen is going by, and there's no parking spot. So what does it do? It's got to keep circling. That keeps circling. So now you have high levels of estrogen. Now you have estrogen levels that are go, going too high. We talked about that earlier. What's that called? Estrogen dominance. So if you're estrogen dominant, what did that lead to? The biggest one? Breast cancer. Proliferation, proliferation of your breast tissue. Not in any way. Okay? Was it? Larissa said that. She's like, oh, I need some more of that. Yeah, I said, no, 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 no. Not, no. This is not the good kind. This is the kind that's actually going to cause breast cancer endometriosis, uterine cancer. These are things we do not want. So, now the question is, where are we finding these xenoestrogens? Everywhere, I think that's right, Maggie. So, this one here, it's called phthalates. Phthalates. <laughs> you guys say that with me? Phthalates. Phthalates, yes. It's hard to say, so we just say it really fast, it sounds like phthalates, yeah, something like that. So, phthalates. You're gonna read, if you read the ingredients of the things you're using, it'll say it right in there. Methyl phthalate, methyl phthalate. All right, so if you know to look for this stuff, before you buy it, what can you do? Not buy it, very good. You can put it back in the shopping cart and hope that nobody else buys it either. I will tell you a story once where I was sitting there, my, I love shopping except when it comes to this kind of stuff, and my wife's like, um, we need dishwasher detergent. Because I know what that means. A lot of label reading. I have to sit in that dark aisle and sit there and read every single one. And every single one. So I can never remember which one I bought last time, which was a pair that passed my test and I bought it. And I got into a conversation with a lady who was like looking at me like, why are you reading all this? I'm like, I don't want any phthalates and SLS and all this stuff. She's like, you sound like you know what you're talking about. I'm like, well, I kind of do. She's like, well, which one should I buy? She's like, this. she followed me around the rest of the time. <laughs> so it was hilarious. She's like, is it this one good? <laughs> and she's the one of these, like, like waiting for me to say yes. That's pretty funny. So, no. So, phthalates, xenoestrogen. Soy. I know a lot of people have heard about soy. Why is soy not good? Here's the thing about soy. If you eat soy, it's not great. It's not awful. If you're eating organic soy beans, edamame, fine. I wouldn't eat it every day. But 95 to 97% of soy, is genetically modified. Now we really get into problems with soy is when we have people who eat 
tofu, tofu burgers, you know, that big soy protein. So that's not, doesn't look like a soybean anymore, does it? No, so it's been processed, condensed, concentrated. So now it's not a few beans you're eating, it's like thousands of beans to make a soy burger or whatever it is. So you really need to be careful with how much you're eating. Easiest way to do it is just not eat soy. You're best off. Another disruptor, parabens. That's what the woman was talking about, methylparaben, benzoparaben. Again, if you read your ingredients, it says it right there. Propylene glycol, it's another one. Propylene glycol is one of the worst ones because what it does, it actually allows your body to absorb more xenoestrogens. So it actually amplifies the xenoestrogenic effects of the other ones that are in those products you're using. And then you have SLS, sodium lauryl sulfate, sodium laureth sulfate. They're the same thing. I had a conversation with a woman once who said, it's lauryl, no, it's laureth. It's a better. I'm like, no, no, it's the same exact thing. Okay, just change the name a little bit. So we need to make sure we're avoiding those things. Now, I bet there's a couple people out there looking in and staring at me right now, looking at coffee. I, I got one right here, just staring and going, mm -hmm. why are you telling me about my coffee? What's so bad about my coffee? So here's the thing about coffee. Now, you, I'll make you a little bit happier. First of all, caffeine increases estradiol levels, which is one of your three estrogens, by 70%. This study was done in women, and it only had an effect if you drank two cups of coffee a day. Not one. I don't know why. But do you feel a little bit better? Okay. Maybe you have that one on that diet. Okay. So here's the thing. You're going to leave here going home and you're looking everywhere going, it's everywhere. What am I supposed to use? So I brought a couple of things that I use from home so I can show you which ones to use. So toothpaste, full of all kinds of the SLS, fluoride, the propylene glycol. I use this brand here, Kiss My Face. Very, very good. Again, there's stuff in there that's not fantastic. It's not going to kill you, but you're not swallowing it anyway. Okay? So this is a really good one here. This is shaving cream. If you try to go read your shaving cream ingredients, you're going to need a dictionary or a thesaurus or somebody to translate it all because it's, you're not going to understand half those words. So again, Dr. Bronner's. Does anybody use Dr. Bronner's? Yeah, lots of hands go up. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's relatively cheap. But this one here is your, your uh, actual face cream. No, not face cream, but um, shaving cream. This is one of my favorite products. This is Dr. Bronner's. Uh, it's a household soap. We use it to wash our hair. We use it to bathe. I clean my dishes with it. I clean my hands with it. When you guys come to my office and you're washing your hands in the bathroom, this is what we're using. And the cool thing is, this is a concentrate. And it's actually on sale right now at Kroger for $9.99. Usually it's at $15.99, so it's a really good deal. And then, what are you cleaning your clothes with? It's gotta be a ton of the stuff. And guys, I went shopping today for this stuff. Even seventh generation, the stuff that's supposed to be really good for you, sodium lauryl sulfate. This one does not have any of that stuff in it. I bought this at Kroger, and all the stuff I bought was actually on sale today. I think they knew I was coming. So if you guys want to go to Kroger afterwards, this is all on sale. And then deodorant has been a tough one, because deodorant has aluminum in it, which leads to Alzheimer's. It definitely has a propylene glycol in it. Um, so I decided to try the natural stuff. I tried a whole bunch of different natural ones, and they work for about three days before a patient will say something. I was, no, no, nobody's ever said anything. I just can tell. Nobody's ever said anything. So what I did is I actually made my own. This is the, my, I made this last weekend. It, very, very simple. There was coconut oil, it was your, I put frankincense in there, lavender in there, uh, shea butter, beeswax, and baking soda. And I have not smelled myself yet. So, so far it's working pretty well, okay? Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to send somebody home with just about everything they needed. So we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and raffle this off. This whole package is going to go home with somebody here tonight. And you're going to get all of it. So go ahead and pull out your tickets. And let's find out who the big winner is.
right. Good stuff. All right. So, I want to make sure it's perfect. Yes, I will share all that with you. Absolutely, how to do it. We, we have, I have a couple of guys that have been doing classes on how to make your own stuff. I might actually think about doing something like that because it could be fun. Could be messy though too. But I'll at least give you some good recipes. So, chances are you're, you have some of this stuff at home. Chances are these eating recipes are in your body right now. So we need to detox this stuff out of our body. And what is the number one detoxifying organ in our body? The liver. Absolutely. It is our liver that detoxes. And what's really cool through this study, or my study, I learned a lot about the liver. And I had no idea what the liver had to do with hormones. And we're going to kind of connect this stuff. So the way the liver works is it pulls toxins in and has two phases of detoxification. Phase one, the purpose of phase one is to get that toxin ready for phase two. Phase two, the purpose is to make it water soluble so that you can either excrete it through your feces or through your urine. That's the very easy definition of how it works here. So, toxins in, step one is phase one. Now here's a problem with phase one. Actually, there's no real problem with phase one. The bigger problem is with phase two. If your phase two is not working, which seems to be a lot of people, phase one overflows. Now the problem with phase one is, when a phase one goes through and takes those toxins to prepare for phase two, you guys follow me? So phase one, phase, okay. So we, before we get to phase two, the byproduct of phase one to get to phase two is actually sometimes more toxic than the toxin was before it went into phase one. So if phase two is not working, it's spilling over, and now you're getting more toxins into your blood. Okay, so your body's trying to help, but it's actually doing damage because phase two is broken. So this was interesting because this tells us required nutrients of phase one, required nutrients of phase two. So what do you need for phase one? You need B vitamins, folic acid, glutathione. You guys have heard me talk about glutathione before. It's the, most, it's the strongest antioxidant known to man. We have no thistle, carotenoids, vitamin E, vitamin C. A lot of this you're going to get from your diet. The glutathione your body helps make if you give it what it needs. Now phase two, step two, you need glutamine, glycine, taurine, cysteine. These are all amino acids. You also need natural sulfur. So you find that in cruciferous vegetables, onions, garlic, cabbage. Has everybody ever smelled cauliflower after you put it into Tupperware for a day or two? Yeah, it's sticky, right? Eggs, they smell sulfur. Your body actually needs that. Your body uses those things to aid itself in detoxification through phase two. And then from there, it goes and it's eliminated out of the body. So, if you do not have what you need for, especially phase two, what's going to happen to those xenoestrogens? Are they going to detoxify? They're going to build up. And they build up, now they're stuck to your cells. What happens to your estrogen levels? Estrogen levels go up. So can you see how a detoxification organ like your liver not working leads to something like breast cancer, prostate cancer? It's not cleaning out. So what do we need to do? We really need to do whatever we can to help our liver detoxify. This is why I love, this was so interesting because I, I did all the study on here and I was like, I wonder if it, what's in our detox system. I know it's in it, but I kind of just went through it and what did it have to do with phase one and phase two? And it lined up just about perfectly. I know a lot of you out there have done our detox system. This is something that I do on a daily basis, but if you're new to the detox system, there actually is a new protocol out there, a new protocol where it's more intense, you do it within two weeks, and you ramp up and ramp down, and we have that protocol over there by the detox system to really help clean you out, and then you can maintain afterwards. But what's really interesting here is that you have the cleanse, you have the chlorella, the milk thistle, the spirulina, the probiotics, which help phase one. You have your glutathione, catalase, superoxide, discontinues, again, phase one. But then you have those amino acids that are needed for phase two. You have glycine, you have glutamine, cysteine. If there's cabbage in there, there's sulfur in there. That's helping phase two. This is all in the cell detox. This is the stuff you take in the morning. And then at night, you take the body detox. Because what happens after phase two? Where does it have to go? Where do those toxins go? They have to be excreted by your body. So the body detox has magnesium in it to help stimulate your digestive system. And it has activated charcoal. Activated charcoal helps bind to the toxins again to help you eliminate it from your body. I found this to be completely amazing. I mean, how, how well it works and how much it lined up with all the research I did. Now, 
Let's talk about essential number one, maximize mind. Stress. So when I came in here today, and we have 55 plus people here today, and nothing's working. I had two, two things I could have done. I could have ran, I could run, get back in my car and my home. Or I could fight. Thank goodness I fought, right? Maybe. All right, so what happens though, let's say you're in that situation or you're going down an alley and somebody pulls a knife on you, what can you do? You can either stay and fight or you can flee. So what happens then to your hormones, cortisol is your stress hormone. Cortisol shoots through the roof. And what does cortisol do? It gets you ready to either fight or flee. So your pupils dilate so you can get more light, your blood pressure goes up, your glucose levels stay high, your, your digestive system stops. Why do you, why are you thinking about digesting food right now? You don't need to. Your immune system is not needed. It shuts down. These are all great things. And as soon as it, but my presentation started to work, my course levels went back down. This is normal. This is, this is exactly how it's supposed to work. But what if that stress doesn't go away? What happens to those fight or flight responses? They stay up. So now you have high blood pressure. So you go to your doctor and they're going to give you medication to bring your high blood pressure down versus finding out why your cortisol levels are keeping it up. So we have something really cool for you to use at home to get rid of all your stress. It's called the stress reduction kit. You put on a hard <coughs> table and you smack your head on it until you go unconscious. That's how you know you're done. Please, nobody take me seriously. No man, don't take me seriously. Don't do that, okay? No, what we've decided to do is show you something from a book called The Seven, uh, I know it's going to screw up that I thought about it. Seven, seven Habits of Highly Successful People. I, I screwed up every time I've said that. This is called Cubby's Four Quadrants. You, if you, has anybody read that book? Great book. You might want to go back and revisit it. This is the four quadrants. You can take notes if you want. I'm going to try to go through it kind of quickly, but you can always look it up online. So you have four quadrants. The first top one is quadrant one. Urgent things and important things. These are things that are crises, pressing, pressing problems, deadlines. If you live in that quadrant, look at the results. Stress, burnout, crisis management, always putting out fires. I don't want to live there. Quadrant two, those are things that are not urgent, but they're very important. Things like prevention, your health, relationship building, recognizing new opportunities, planning, recreation. And the results are actually pretty good. Vision and perspective, balance, discipline, control, few crises. I like it in there. This is, I, I, I equate one and two with food. So you don't plan your meals out in the week. Now you're hungry, that's important. And now I gotta, I gotta eat now, it's urgent. What do you end up doing? Eating something you shouldn't like, pizza? All right, let me say that. Yeah, you know, fast food. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I'm at the ballpark and these parents are bringing kids McDonald's. Why? Because they're living at a quadrant one. They didn't plan ahead. It's absolutely impossible not to ever eat fast food. So quadrant three, not important, but apparently urgent. Interruptions. Has anybody ever heard that ding go off in their phone? They go running over to see who texted them. Yeah, I've done it too. Yeah, these are interruptions. Your short-term focus still again crisis management. You're seeing goals and plans as worthless because you're living here. You feel victimized. You feel out of control. I know people that everything is urgent. And most of it's not important. If everything was important, I mean, I mean if everything was urgent and not important, when do you breathe? Right? Why do we think that everything, everything, everything? That would just drive me crazy. Nobody knows anything like that, right? Okay. Um, and then you have quadrant four, not urgent, not important. This is stuff that we waste our time doing. Usually we're going there, so we don't have to do the other quadrants. Okay? So when you have goals, so your goal here should look at, see what you do, what, what, what you, how, how everything lines up in your day, and really try to get it all up into quadrant two. If you can live at a quadrant two, your life would be a lot easier, a lot happier, a lot more planned out. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. So plan ahead, plan for the future, it's awesome. So, now, again, back to cortisol. If your cortisol levels will go up if you're not working out. Who here works out at least three days a week? Raise your hand. 
Okay, a lot and not enough. So what we need to do is teach you how to work out. Don't, don't worry, I'm not gonna make you guys work out here tonight. I know typically we do that, we're not gonna do that here tonight unless you want to. Does anybody want to? Woo! Yeah, the, the students in the back wanna work out. And this is the guy up here. Now we're not gonna make you do this. But when you typically work out, you do that cardio. Because I have people that tell me, well I go to the gym and I do I weight lift and I, I go for a walk after dinner. You know, those things are fantastic. It's way better than sitting on the couch doing nothing. But if there's a more, much more effective and efficient way of doing it, wouldn't you want to know? The answer is obviously yes. So with the MAX-T3 workout, the way we do it is called metabolic conditioning, where our goal is specific hormonal responses. I'm working out to get my body to do something with those hormones that are going to be positive in my life. So when you do a 12-minute surge workout, giving you everything you got for those 12 minutes, testosterone goes way up. Human growth hormone goes way up. These are the ones that those, those um, athletes are artificially trying to inject to get to go up. Because it builds muscle, it burns belly fat, it makes you feel better, it makes you live longer. And then cortisol levels go down. You're actually burning fat for 36 hours after one 12 minute workout. Who doesn't want that? I, I want that. I mean, does anybody here want that? You guys are live and you guys do need a workout. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we need to drop cortisol levels. So one way to drop cortisol levels is going to help drop your stress is working out. The other way is taking an herb called ashwagandha. Has anybody heard of ashwagandha before? Can everybody say ashwagandha? Ashwagandha. ashwagandha. It's just fun to say, isn't it? Ashwagandha. Yes. Um, so ashwagandha is actually, if you guys are taking the women's multi, ashwagandha is in there. But we also have the men's fit, which has ashwagandha in there. And the reason why you put it in there is because it has been studied, studies have shown that it drops your cortisol level by 25%. This is something that's a good thing. This is a good thing. It's also a green coffee bean extract. Don't, don't worry, it's decaffeinated. You're gonna ask me that, right? Sure. Yes. It's decaffeinated, but what it does, it helps stabilize your blood sugar levels. And when you stabilize those blood sugar levels, you're not feeling those cravings, right? You're not really chasing after those sugars. So making sure you're working out on a daily basis will also keep you awake during the presentation. I saw a couple of dozers out there already. All right, so that's a good thing. Now, in the beginning, we talked about that symphony orchestra, the symphony orchestra of hormones. And what was it that controlled every hormone? Louder, I can't hear you. The brain, thank you. The brain controlled every function in our body, including that symphony orchestra. So, I want you guys to remember, I am a chiropractor. Can you guys see this over here? I know it's way far away from everybody. But you remember that God put the power in your nervous system, in your brain and nervous system. And the one thing I really want you guys to take from this is, every single one of you, he put 100% of his love and power right there in your brain. Every single one of you got the same amount. Now, our organs need that to function. How does it get there? Yeah, through the spinal cord and nerves. So we need to send messages down that spinal cord out along those nerves to every single cell tissue organ in your body. So as long as there's 100% function here, from here, there's no interference. If there's no interference, how healthy are you going to be? 100% healthy. So how do people get sick then? Why do people get sick? Subluxation. And what's subluxation? Subluxation is pressure on the nerve. You put pressure on a nerve, what happens to that nerve? It's getting crushed, pinched. And wherever that organ is going, is that getting 100% anymore? No. So if you're not getting 100% in your heart, that's called heart disease. I can go on and on. The answer is always going to be, we need no interference. So what is my job as a chiropractor? It's to make sure that you guys are living a life free of interference. Because if you're living a life free of interference, you are going to be healthy, living the, the, the life God wanted for you. And that's all I ever want for you. I got two thumbs up from this little guy up here. I'll take that. So, but I, want, I have some really interesting pictures. These are our cadavers. One on the left, that is a normal curve in that person's neck from the side. Look at the spinal cord there. Can you see how nice and thick that spinal cord is? Especially right there at the top. That's the brainstem right there. It's nice and thick. This is phase one. Phase one decay. What happened to that curve? It straightened up, didn't it? Now, Alfred Briggs, he's a medical doctor, he stated that loss of cervical curve stretches the spinal cord five to seven centimeters, producing pathological tension, putting the body in a state of disease. 
Medical doctors know this. There's tons of research out there from medical doctors showing that you put pressure on your spinal cord, it's going to lead to disease. But why don't they tell you about it? Because they can't fix it. Exactly. If they can't fix it, why would they tell you about it? Because no drug can fix that. So we have phase one. This person, they're sick or they're healthy? Sick. They're sick because there's pressure on the nervous system. Now, here's the trick question, and some of you know this answer. How does that person in phase one feel? The answer is, thank you, Larissa was paying attention. It doesn't matter. I know people who have a, an awful curve and feel great. I know people that have a perfect curve and don't feel all that great. It doesn't matter how you feel because if there's pressure on the nervous system, are you healthy or sick? The answer is, you're sick every single time. But watch what happens if you do nothing at phase one. Now you do the phase two, where the curve looks good at the bottom and then it starts to go what's called kyphotic at the top. It's going the wrong direction. And then you have phase three, where it goes the wrong direction and it starts to come back the right direction. Right? These are really bad curves in the neck. So, how healthy are these people? Are they healthy or sick? Every single one of them. How do they feel? Doesn't matter. You guys can keep that listening. All right, very good. Doesn't matter. Awesome. So, this is an x-ray. This is the only way I could ever tell you how healthy you truly are. Because if you think you feel good, it means you're healthy and you're wrong. Because that person there could feel healthy or, or not feel well at all. But look at this curve. Again, look at that spot cord, nice and thick. Lots of life coming from that brain and going to the body. Now look at this one. What's going on in that curve? Is it going the right way or the wrong way? It's going the wrong way. And when you have what's called a kyphosis, the curve going the wrong direction, right here at C4 and C5, look what happens right through here, that spinal cord, it's being what? Pinched. Those nerves go directly to an organ, a gland, right here. Can somebody tell me what that is? The thyroid gland. I know there are a lot of, especially women in here, that have thyroid issues. If you have a thyroid issue, your doctor's probably never found out why. Am I right? Yeah, because they don't really look for the why. But I've had multiple, multiple, multiple patients who've had thyroid problems get off their thyroid medication because we found out it was causing it. And it was supplementation. It was pressure on the nerve that's going to the thyroid. You can give that person drugs all day. I had a conversation with a patient today about this. You can keep taking those drugs, but it's not going to fix the problem. As we start to fix this, your body's going to start to make it. And then you're going to, you're going to have hyper, hyperthyroidism. And then you start backing off, and then you're going to be normal, and then you're going to go up again because your body's going to start making it again. So again, my goal is not to fix thyroid problems. My goal is not to fix heart problems. My, my goal is to remove your parents so that you can heal yourself. So here's how we do that. We take somebody who's got a curve that's going straight up and down, and through the advanced corrective care that we do with the head weighting, the home care, and all the vibration codes and the specific adjustments, look at the curve in that person's neck after two months of care. You guys see a difference? Big difference. This is somebody that had thyroid problems. Can you see why? Look at the subluxation right there. There's pressure in the nerve, C5, C6. A lot better over here. Take pressure up the nerve, the body always will heal better and function better. So, how do you know if you have pressure in your nerves? What's the only way to find out? X-ray. X-ray is truly the only way, but there are things called warning signs. Some people call these symptoms. I call them warning signs because symptom, you think of a symptom, you think go to a doctor and get something for your symptom. I think of a warning sign, it's the same thing, but if you have a warning sign, that means I need to know why, that, why is that warning light going off? What's causing that warning light going on? If a warning light's going on in your car, you'll just cover it up, right? You keep driving. You find out why is that happening? Dominic has done that. Is that what you're laughing at? Oh, you've done that. Nice. Sorry, Don, I apologize. Um, so there's something called warning signs. So if you've ever had headaches, neck pain, thyroid problems, depression, insomnia, things you would normally think to tell your chiropractor, there's a reason why. You can cause the problem, and the only way to do that is by looking at the nervous system. So how many of you out there have never been checked by the chiropractor? Anybody here never been? Who here's never been to my office? Raise your hand. See one. I know there's more than one. Two. No. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Three. All right. So what we're gonna do for those of you that are here that are guests, I want to actually give you an opportunity to get checked in the office if you like. 
But if you don't like it, don't, I don't know what else you would do to be healthy. So what we're going to do is if you're going to have this sheet here, all you got to do is write your name at the top and circle the time and date on the other side of the date you want to come in and actually get a checkup. And typically that, that exam, x-rays at our office is $120. That was four. $120. We're doing it tonight for $40. That's your exam and x-rays. It'll be the most important time you ever spend at the doctor's office to actually find out, do you have a problem? Because if you never know, you never know. You never know what could have been. I hate to see that. So I want to give you that opportunity to come into the office and get checked. So tonight, a little recap. What caused the hormone problems? We've got to go through this. We have chronic spinal stress, autonomic nervous system dysregulation. That's a big word for subluxation, putting pressure on the nerves going to a gland, causing the gland not to function. We have chronic emotional stress. What happens then? We increase our cortisol levels, increase our stress hormones. In chronic metabolic stress, inflammatory foods, vitamin deficiencies. If you're chronic inactivity, get up, move. The inactivity is going to cause lack of oxygen. And then you have the xenoestrogens, the chemical exposure. So here's what we need to do about this. Reduce our exposure to those toxins. You guys now know what you read for and look for on those ingredients. So you need to find them and put them back. If you have them at the home, you know I'm not about wasting money, but I don't, I'm not about killing myself either. So take them and throw them away and replace them with a better substitute. Detoxify. Do the detox system. Do what you can to help your body detox. Eat more cruciferous vegetables. Eat more garlic, possibly. Um, remove neurological interference. For those of you that are patients, stay on your plan. Get that spine corrected. For those of you that are maintenance patients, never miss that week. If you miss a week, guess when subluxation lies to come? When you miss that week. And this will have come up this, this, this summer. Vacations. We have vacations. Do you think subluxation cares if you're on vacation? Just like cancer doesn't care either. So when you go on vacation, a lot of my patients, what they'll do is they'll say, can I get a copy of my x-rays? So when I go to Wisconsin, I'm going to find a maximized living doctor where I'm at, and I'm going to go once a week for those two weeks I'm going to be gone. That's a, that's a patient that gets it. So we need to exercise effectively, efficiently. Reduce sources of stress. That's a big one. Use that, that quadrant to get out of that everything's urgent, nothing's important. And switch those around. And then the specific nutritional support. And this brings me to something that's new at my office, something that we haven't really rolled out yet, but I wanted to give everybody here an opportunity to use it. This is a, a new free tool. It's called the LRQ. It's a life risk questionnaire, lifestyle risk questionnaire. Kind of gives you an idea of how well are you doing? How, how's everything going? And what I have here, guys, everybody should have this sheet here. Does everybody have this? Can you guys pull it out? Where it says the black one, white and black, it says sign me up. If you would like us to email you this test, all you got to do is put your name and email at the top and just check off. Send me the LRQ. It's free. We get, we, we'll get the, uh, the results. We'll print it off for you. You can kind of take a look and see where are you, how healthy are you. Do you have issues that need to get checked? And what we've been doing is we've actually started something called metabolic testing. And this metabolic testing, if you actually have like a test like this person does where they're in a crisis, we can do urine tests and blood tests at the office now and find out if you have any pathological biomarkers that are causing issues. And if you do, we can come up with a nutritional support system to help correct that. And typically, if you went to any other doctor, that test retails for $1,400. Not this one, but the urine test and blood test. $1,400. Doctors cost $700. But thank goodness for Maximize nice Living, because we have so many doctors in the network, we actually were able to negotiate a better price. So that price is about $399 for our patients to actually do the test. So I just wanted to throw that out there for you. I'm not, I haven't like grand opening it yet, if that's even a word. Um, but I wanted to at least give you this tool here, kind of see where you are. So we also have all of our Maximize Living resources here today. Everything here is 10% off. We do have bundles. And if you want to get the bundles, they are 15% off. Easiest way to order would be using this sheet here, your order form. Put your name at the bottom. You can put your credit card information on there and just check off what you'd like. And the bundles are prescribed on the back. So my question for you guys now is raise your hand if you learned something new today. Fantastic. My goal is achieved. Now, even better, I have another goal. 
Did ever, raise your hand if you learned something that you can actually go home and implement tonight. That's a good math. Good. And if you implement that tonight, will you be healthier? Yes. Yeah. We, we all agree, we'll all be healthier, right? If we all just do this one thing. Agree? Okay. Now, does everybody know one person that should have been here with them tonight? Does everybody know one person that could have been here tonight? And what if that person was with you tonight? And they learn this exact same information. And they're going to get healthier because they can go home and implement that one thing tonight. My question and my, my challenge to you is, can everybody commit to bringing one person to our next event, which is a week from now? Which is a free dinner. I'm actually going to take you out to dinner. And I'm going to give you that opportunity to bring that one person with you. And what I'm going to do is take this information we talked about tonight, squeeze it down to about 30 minutes. Give them the highlight reel. They're still going to leave that night with good information, something that they can implement, something that they can make them healthier. And first of all, can anybody, can everybody commit to bring one person? I mean, one, one person should be easy, right? Because we can all think of like 40, right? Yeah. So if we want to bring one person, first of all, I want you to make sure you tell them, do not bring your wallet. I'm not selling them anything. I'm not, there's nothing that's going to be there. It's just us, me buying you dinner, and good information. So on the back of that card that you use to sign yourself up, on the back, you'll see a place to write your friend, your family members, your husband, your wife's name. Write them down. I want you guys to do that right now. Just write that one person down. And you have one job. Go home and tell them what you learned a little bit about tonight. And let them know that my staff is going to be calling them on Wednesday night at 6. My staff is going to spend an hour, two hours, three hours, whatever it takes, right, ladies? Right. That's right. To call them. And just all we're going to do is invite them to dinner. But my favorite to you, though, is make sure you call them because I can attest to this from my staff. There's nothing worse than calling somebody who you think is expecting your phone call and they have no idea who you are while you're calling them. And then that makes my girls feel like telemarketers, which is not what we want to. So if everybody can commit to one person, if we have 60 people here tonight, that's 120 people at next week's dinner. That would just be incredible. Because if we're on a mission to change healthcare in Canton, I can't do it by myself. We need your help. We need your help telling as many people about this information. Because there's friends and family members that have no idea what a xenoestrogen is, and now you guys do. That's not fair. So I want to make sure you are there next week. It's at Stratus Kitchen and Bar over in Canton on May 7 o'clock, Monday night, bring a friend. On June 11th, we have a Max Life call. This is a conference call that you guys can tune into whenever you, uh, where, from wherever you are. Um, you'll be getting an email next week on how to log in and what phone number to call and dial and all that fun stuff. This is a 45 minute to an hour call from one of the other Max Life Living Doctors, kind of recapping a little bit about what we learned here tonight. And then we have something called movie night. Who here has been to a movie night before? Yeah, just a few, because we've like, we haven't had many movie nights here. We're doing a movie night in just a couple weeks. This is a lot of fun. We're going to be doing it at my office. We're going to be screening a movie called Doctor. It's all about our healthcare system. I make organic popcorn. We make some treats. We have one. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. We get to hang out and watch a movie. And then afterwards, we can just discuss it. So if anybody has topics we want to talk about, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's very informal. But those things you can sign up for again on this sheet here. So guys, thank you all so much for coming. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys learned something and go take some action here tonight. Thank you guys very much. Shut the gates at sunset